In one of my breaking videos, in which I show new tech I added to my collection, I said I would make a similar video when I would find an Apple II. Well, the day has arrived and I finally am happy to report that I managed to get an Apple II, and even better, for a decent amount of money. It was only a 10 minute drive away, which made it even better. Here it is, an Apple IIe. It boots up fine and is clean. I love the old Apple logo. Sadly, the floppy drive is missing it. Also, the system came with three discs. I particularly like this one. All rise for the Dutch anthem. What I always find fun about adding a new architecture to my collection is that you have to figure out what commands it uses. So I discovered that the directory command doesn't work in this version of BASIC. You will have to type catalog. That will show you the contents of a disk. The drive is working okay, but I think it needs a bit of service. I also got something very exciting to use with it. This is a floppy emu, a bit of a difficult word. This device lets you emulate the drives of an Apple II and a whole bunch of other cool Apple machines, like the Macintoshes. It came all the way from the States and I had to assemble the frosted ice acrylic case for it, which took me a couple of minutes. It's simple to install. You just open the Apple II, remove the connector from the disk drive and connect the floppy MU to the floppy controller card. Then you turn on the computer and the floppy MU will automatically start. In this case, it is loading Petsky robots for the Apple II, which is a fun game. Floppy MU came with an SD card already preloaded with software. This is Castle Wolfenstein. I love the look of this green Toshiba display. This game gave an error code, maybe something wrong with the disk image. Moon Patrol looks fun, but I'll have to find the manual for it since I have no clue what keys it uses. Maybe it needs a joystick. This interscreen from Crisis Mountain looks very retro-y. Personally, I really enjoy playing around with software like this Print Shop Companion, where you can, for instance, change the appearance of fonts, like I did with this A. By the way, there will be no magic smoke in this video, because before I tested the computer, I removed the Riva caps. Boy, do I hate the smell of that smoke. Here is the PSU serial number. I took out the screws and spent 50 minutes fighting with the PSU to get out the PCB. I cut that out of the video to keep it short. I used my thumb to dissolve them, which went really smoothly. They came out very nicely, no hot air required. Inside the computer is also something else that might come in handy. I want to see if the keyboard of this Apple IIe can be used with my two AVT Com2s that I recently added to my collection. They are Apple II clones, although aesthetically they don't try to look like an Apple II. Also I think for the Apple II and the AVTs this box can be a nice addition. This is an Apple II interface card that you can use with the two drives it came with. The card looks to be in a very good condition and so do the drives. I got these for an amazing price so they were a great deal. Something else Apple related that you will soon see on the channel is the contents of this and maybe more pneumatic tapes. At least the content on this tape seems to not yet been uploaded to the internet. So maybe we have a first. The full story behind this I will tell in that video. So like I always say I'm very happy with in this case my new retro Apple II. Thanks for watching. <laughs>